Hi, my name is Sean, and I wanted to share with you this workbench project that I've been working on for the last couple months. This has been an idea of mine. It's kind of been rolling around in my head for the last couple years, and I find recently I finally had the opportunity to uh, actually build it. And the reason I wanted to share this is as I was doing research, looking at different types of benches, different designs, different styles, vices, and all of those things, the videos on YouTube were a really great resource of research and just seeing how other people had built benches, how they designed them, what they were using them for, and I found that to be kind of an invaluable resource. So I wanted to kind of shoot this video and kind of document the process just to be able to share it with others and sort of give back and hopefully you get um, something out of it. I learned a ton from other people and so I just kind of wanted to pass it along and share. So with this project, I'm gonna post two separate videos. This video is gonna be a comprehensive build. It's gonna follow my steps from a pile of lumber to the bench you see right now. The second video is just gonna be a high level, high level overview. I'm gonna walk through some of the design features and functions, and it'll be a much more concise video. But if you're interested in seeing the details, and how, and how this thing came together, then stay tuned. So the first step I'm going to take in getting the material ready to glue up for the top is just to kind of, is to cut uh, the boards for the top down to a rough length, then I'll rip them down to size and start working from there. So let's get going. All right, now that all the boards for the tabletop are cut kind of rough in lengthways, it's time to rip them down through the table saw and get them down uh, to size. Here we go. All right, the first step of ripping boards is done. So we've got them all ripped in half. So now I'm just going to cut them down to, so they're as consistent as possible on the width. So it looks like we're gonna end up, this cut is supposed, is gonna be about three and seven sixteenths of an inch. Um, so that gives me a lot of confidence that we're gonna end up with that uh, at least three inches overall. So I'm really pleased with the way it's going so far. So we'll get these things ripped down so they're as consistent as possible and uh, get ready for glue. All right. So part of my bench design includes an apron that goes all the way around the bench. So that's both the front, the back, and both ends. So on the ends, in order to glue that apron on here, I need to create kind of a tongue or something uh, to give me a little better glue surface. So before we go and glue up uh, the boards for the bench top, what I want to do is start creating that tongue. So here I'm going to basically create a tongue that's about an inch an inch thick and an inch in from each of the boards and that'll kind of give me a glue surface to attach that apron to. The apron will end up having a 
dado or a groove in it uh, that'll match up with that. And then on the outside of the apron, I'm going to end up using some dovetails for a little additional mechanical strength. So I've got the table saw set up. With long boards like this, I prefer to use the table. It's much easier to handle on the table saw than the router table. That would be another way to kind of notch, you know, kind of create that, that tongue here. But I have it set up for the table saw. Um, so I'm just going to kind of chip away at it and and we'll go from there. So that's our next, that's my next step. Um, so let's get to it. I'll just kind of break this stuff off here. It's a little sloppy. It would be cleaner, obviously, with the router table. Let's see if I can get this edge cleaned up here a little bit. I did put my block plane in my pocket here. Let's see if we can. That gets some of it. I'm gonna have to come back and fix this with a chisel or something, but. You get the idea. That's what we're shooting for. We kind of create that all the way across the boards and then when they glue up, this'll Obviously, it'll take some trimming that we'll uh, have to make some adjustments later. All right, as you can see, I did. I was able to get the bulk of the bench top glued up. Um, you know, it was a kind of a challenging glue up. It's just a lot of pieces and a lot of uh, surface area. So it is, it is kind of challenging. It's probably been the most challenging glue up I've ever uh, tried. In hindsight, I probably would do this tongue differently. It, it turned out really well, and when I was dry fitting everything together, the tongue lined up just like I had hoped. It was in pretty good shape. The challenge was during the glue up, um, the, the bot, anyway, I started getting stuff setting up, and so I wasn't really able to get the ends aligned quite as as much as I would have liked. But I did use calls here um, in, in three places, trying to keep you know the bench top, you know, the top and bottom as flat as possible. Hopefully well, that'll help. Because I, I am going to use hand planes to flatten the top. So I was trying to keep it as lined up as I could um, just to kind of make that process a little easier. So that ended up being really the priority, trying to keep it as flat as possible, not so much you know, this lining up and fitting the apron on the ends. Uh, it's gonna need some refinement anyway, so I'll have to address that, but otherwise it turned out pretty well. I've got the right width, the width I was shooting for. I've got a pretty good thickness here. Uh, so all in all, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm happy with the way it's going. Okay, with the bench top, glued up and all that cleaned up and moved off the table saw. We're back at the table saw and it's time to start rough dimensioning uh, the legs. So we're going to get started with that uh, right now. All right, I'm back with the boards for the legs cut down to rough dimensions. So I've got the width roughed out, I've got the height roughed down. So I wanted to spend a couple minutes just talking about how I'm planning to assemble not only the legs, but then how they get mated with the bench top. So 
I'm roughly following the process that James Hamilton and the Stumpy, what, uh, Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal did. He did a video on a 2x6 Rubo build um, some time ago, and he kind of used a similar process, which is kind of which is utilize, using the consistent thickness of construction lumber and sort of leveraging that that thickness in that final assembly and in that glue up. So, but here I've got three boards that are going to make up each leg, and this is this would be just for this is for for reference the front of the bench, and this will be the bench body. So both of these will act as tenants. So this, this board, the, the back board and the front board are going to act as tenants. I'm going to create a small shoulder here so that as I'm doing that glue up, the board that makes up the tabletop right here, this course of the, uh, the bench top, will have a place to register on both this back and the front. I'll also take on the front and uh, dove, do a slight dovetail here in the Rubo style so it kind of looks like what we're shooting for. And then of course, the, I've got this channel for a solid board here in the middle. So that's what we're shooting for. That's the plan, that's the idea. The next step is to create the shoulders for the front board and back board. Um, once I've got these, I don't have this glued up yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna create the shoulders on both the back board, front board of the leg, and then we'll make the glue up and finalize the leg size. So in getting the legs ready, the first thing I want to do is I've got the boards kind of separated and I've cut kind of a relief here uh, for this shoulder I want to create. I'm going to use the router table. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. I know I don't have a bandsaw. I know if I use my jigsaw, more than likely with the thickness of the 2x4, my blade's going to drift a little bit, uh, which is going to affect how tight, or I've got to do quite a bit of uh, cleaning up with a chisel or plane to get uh, the, sh the shoulders nice and square. So to, to try to prevent that, I'm going to use the router table. So I've got it set up just to kind of chew away at this. So I've got the depth set so far to, I've got the depth of the router cut for the depth of my shoulder, and then I'm just going to nibble away this edge gradually on both sides on all four legs. So here we go. All right, so the back third of the legs is done. The shoulders came out pretty well on the router table. That worked out just fine. Uh, so now I've got this one clamped up here in the jaw horse um, rig to use the handsaw to cut the dovetails for the, for the front portion. Uh, so I've got this one marked out ready to go and uh, it's just gonna be patient and careful trying to make sure that it doesn't, that, my, that I don't wander as I'm cutting, as I'm, I don't want to kind of try to avoid drifting. I did try to help myself in marking, you really can't see it in the camera, but I did bring a line uh, down the front, both the front and back edge of the board uh, to try to give me uh, kind of that visual cue uh, so that I'll know if I'm if the if the saw is kind of wandering uh, as it's making the cut so let's get this cut started I will admit I'm not particularly skilled at hand sawing So I'm just going to be patient. And hopefully 
hopefully with a little patience I can make this cut as accurately as possible. All right, I'm gonna get back to work. We'll check in later. All right, I'm back with the legs glued up. And I, was, I got rid of the squeeze out on both surfaces um, of the glue joint with the card scraper. So it's relatively smooth. Now I just need to work down uh, kind of to my final dimension and kind of flatten both of those sides where, where that lamination went together. So I'm going to do that uh, this time with a hand plane. It's a little too wide. Uh, the board is too wide to make in a single pass at the table saw. So I'm going to grab my hand planes. It shouldn't take too much. I've got reference lines to, to try to get down to a consistent five inches on each of these legs. So let's get started with that. So I'm done with the legs. I've got those trimmed off so that they're flush on the bottom. I've got the glued up edges all cleaned up. They're in good shape. So now I want to start with the joinery for the stretchers and to get the base assembled. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do so is on the bottom, I, I want to have a shelf, so I'm gonna. My first step is I'm gonna cut a rabbit in the stretchers that go around the bottom. It's it's gonna be roughly seven eighths by seven eighths. And my idea there is to just be able to drop in a piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood into that into that bottom into that recess. And I want just a little bit of a lip to kind of hold it in place. I probably won't fasten down the plywood. I'll probably just leave it there and let the slight lip uh, kind of hold it in place. Ultimately I'd like to have a, I'd like to build some drawers like a cabinet with drawers on the bottom just kind of utility drawers to hold tools and supplies and things. So I do want to use something that's relatively stout. This is kind of the long stretcher here that will go front and back and so I'm going to cut a rabbit here and then I've also got some supports that I'll put in the, you know, kind of in the middle of this to kind of help hold the weight of, the, of, of eventually kind of a tool chest underneath the bench. So that's the plan. We're going to start with a rabbit and we'll be kind of working through all the pieces and parts for the stretchers, cutting tenons, and all that kind of fun stuff. Alright, I've got the rabbits finished on the lower stretchers. So now I'm just going to start on these on the longer part of the stretcher. I'm going to use the table saw and the crosscut sled and just kind of nibble away at the shoulder to create a tenon on both ends. Um, so we'll get to it. Okay, I'm back with the joinery cut on all of the stretchers. So we've got tenons formed and got everything laid out. We've got all the mortises laid out on, on each of the four legs and then some cross bracing on the bottom. So I've got all that stuff laid out. I'll go back to the drill press and just kind of hog out most of the material where the mortises are going to go and then we'll come back with the chisel and clean that up. I'm finished up with the drill press and I've got holes hogged out ready just to come back and clean up with the chisel so let's get to work with the details.
All right, so I'm back with the all of the mortises cleaned out. Um, we're, I've got everything, got the chisel, everything cleaned out of here and these notches ready for the tenons, everything is fitting. I did a dry fit just to make sure uh, everything is going together like I want it. The nice thing is up at the top I need, between the back of each of these legs, I need 15 inches and that's coming together uh, pretty spot on. So that's encouraging. That That's probably the most critical dimension uh, that I need as, as I'm putting this together. So I'm glad to see that's working out as planned. So the next step really is just kind of getting the ends together. So I'm going to kind of put both ends together and then I'll connect the ends with the, the stretchers I've got for the bottom. Uh, it, a lot of that is just not having enough clamps that are long enough uh, to kind of span the whole thing. Plus just, I, I, I was afraid it might get a little unwieldy trying to do, trying to glue up the entire base all at one time. So I'm gonna glue up both ends, let that dry, and then uh, come back maybe this afternoon, this evening or something, and connect the ends or maybe first thing in the morning. Um, so it's time to get gluing. Here's a quick shot of the glue up for the legs. So both both legs across the ends are glued. I've got clamps on the top and bottom stretchers, kind of on both, both faces of the legs. They turned out pretty well. The top stretcher, bottom stretcher on, on both sets is, is 90 degrees, pretty square to the uh, to the legs and I've also got 15 inches really dead on 15 inches at the top there in between the the back sides of both of those legs so it's all turned out pretty well we just got to let it dry and then we'll connect the connect those two sets of legs with the bottom stretchers and get ready to get the top in place all right so we'll let that dry and we'll be back so while I'm waiting <clears throat> for the glue to dry on the ends, I need to start working on or fixing the ends of kind of the core of the bench top. So the idea here is really just to kind of create a tenon or a tongue on the end of this. Then when I'm putting the table, uh, the bench together, I'm going to have an end cap um, that'll have a mortise, dado, groove, whatever you want to call it, that'll kind of come and fit up against this. So I roughed this out using the table saw when I was cutting down the, the length for, uh, for the core bench top. And as I did that, I just kind of nibbled away at all of these boards. There's about 10 of them. I did it on both ends, both sides. And over time, what I didn't realize had happened is I nudged my stop block on the crosscut sled. It, it shifted on me. And so you can see here in the, in, you know, this is not aligned anywhere close. Now I knew I needed to, I knew I was gonna have to come back and clean this edge up anyway, uh, but I'm gonna have to come back much further than I had anticipated. So. I'm going to work on correcting that. So effectively what I'm going to be doing is using the router. We'll kind of trim here back to this line. I've got a straight edge set up here. I'm just going to flip the router over and use it by hand. And then I'll also have to do the same thing down here on the end uh, and get this edge flushed up as well, flip it over. And I've got this line kind of extended around on both ends. So that's what I'm working on next is just to kind of correct this tongue um, on the end of the kind of the core bench top. All right, so the base is all glued up. We got the bottom stretchers put in yesterday afternoon. Everything's kind of dried overnight. It's kind of an interesting challenge, just kind of getting all the clamps together. As it turned out, the the base from end to end was a little wider than my longest clamps so 
you may see in the middle it kind of looks like a mess there but there's essentially just two clamps one clamp to the other both on the top and bottom so the bottom is where the stretchers that's what we were really gluing together there on the bottom those bottom those long bottom stretchers and then at the top I just wanted to make sure I had about <clears throat> an equal distance between the tops uh, they were sprung open a little bit when we first applied clamping pressure to the bottom so we use clamps up near the top just to get everything kind of square and have more or less the same width between each legs both top and bottom so that turned out relatively well hopefully when we take the clamps off it won't spring back open the next step really is just to get the base off of the router table and table saw and start assembling the top so this is just a quick shot of getting the kind of core part of the table set in between the legs. So now the next step is to get the next two courses uh, within the legs. So essentially on both sides it's going to be here and here and then also the piece that, that's going to run all the way through the legs so that'll be the next step and then we'll work on once we've got those kind of four boards in place then it's going to be time for the apron okay so hopefully from the end it's a little easier to see the individual boards and how they kind of line up what I wanted to point out, I removed the clamp that was right over the two legs here. But effectively, what, uh, how, the, how this went together was I, I put this core portion, which was in between the back of the legs, together in one slab. That, that, that's really kind of the core of the bench top. And then what I did is I had a, a long board that went in the notch that went in between the back and the front of each of the legs and it runs the length of the table so it's a full length board just like the core and that lead, left me essentially with a couple of little gaps or teeth around the tent so instead of cutting making a solid bench top and cutting a mortise out for the tenon. I essentially just glued the boards around the tenons. Okay, and so the only piece that hasn't been done yet is I'm making a little wider apron for the for the. This is the back for the front and both ends. So the next step really is to is to work on the aprons. Hi, I'm back. So I adjusted the order that I'm putting the bench together, and the and the last step I completed was 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 adding the workbench casters to the bench um, it occurred to me it'd be a lot easier now that this thing is kind of together and stable be a lot easier to get the apron on all the way around the bench if i could easily turn the bench so it's starting to get heavy not so easy to move around which is exactly what i want until you're ready to move it around so I went ahead and grabbed, I, I already had these casters in the shop, oh, here's a quick box of them. I, I ordered these from Rockler, uh, you can get them from Woodcraft, Amazon, many different places. And, and they, I, I hooked them up last night, they work great. The one thing that I did that was a little different, I will try to zoom in so you can see it. But I connected both, on each end, I connected the two wheels. with a piece of angle iron. So that's just like a kind of a strut angle iron piece that came off an adjustable shelf system and all I did was cut it down. Uh, it was scrap I had laying around but I saw another workbench build that, that did a similar thing. They used uh, it looked like square steel tubing which, which honestly I think would be better, but uh, I had this, so that's what I used. I'll show you 
how it works. But on this side in particular, you can kind of see right behind me, I'm always going to be dealing with that wall. But this makes it very easy to flip that down. So I was always, I, I, would, I was concerned about using the wheels and not being able to reach this back corner because most of the time I'm going to be here and uh, the great thing is with that on there, I can just very easily, I don't have to reach that far corner to lift that up. So that works out really well in my opinion. All right, I'm back in the shop to work on the apron that's going to wrap the bench. So I've got end caps down here for both ends. So this I've got a couple of 2x8s glued together and that's going to give me my final width on the bench. We're shooting for 72 inches overall so hopefully that'll work out once we get everything glued together. So on the end caps what I need to do is cut a dado on one of them. I've got a couple holes that will, that will uh, work with the in vise. And on the rest of it, it's just a matter of fitting this dovetail piece in the leg. I'm also going to dovetail the, this end portion, this kind of short portion out here from the leg to the end. I'm going to dovetail it into these end caps. Uh, hopefully that will add a little strength to the overall apron and especially the end caps. So here's a quick progress check on assembling the apron. So I've got the wide spans in between the legs on both the front and back glued in place. You can see the clamps there. The other thing, I forgot to film any of the construction pro process, but I wanted to, to make just quick mention of, of how I matched up the angles on the on the front so the each of the legs front and back that outside leg has got is dovetailed so it's got a slight 20 degree angle to it instead of being square at 90. so in order to help make the cuts i made that quick just a quick down and dirty single side cross cut sled for the table saw and I made it for the right hand side. So on, you might be able to see in this picture that I actually haven't changed the blade yet. So it's sitting at roughly a 20 degree angle, which matches up with the angle on the legs. So I used that sled on the one side so I could tilt the angle. So the blade tilts to the left. And so I put the sled, I made the sled to go on the right, but that allowed me especially on the middle portion that goes in between the legs that that board was a little over uh, about 40 inches or so wide so wide enough that i i was concerned about trying to use a miter gauge to control all of that as i'm you know making a cross cut across the ends of the boards at an angle so that that sled allowed that to happen it worked out really great. It also allowed me to, to really be able to dial in and kind of sneak up on the fit so I didn't cut it, cut those boards too short or leave, you know, I, I left them long intentionally and just kind of nibbled away at it. I could take really, really small bites at the right angle until I got the fit that I was looking for. So that's how I did that, just kind of describing it. And it turned out relatively well. Uh, the, since I hand cut the dovetails, there was a little uh, tweaking to do. You know, some there it was. The angles turned out really well. I, I only had to adjust the angle of the blade once for you know essentially about eight cuts. So that worked out relatively well. I was kind of surprised at that, um, but I still had to do a little fitting with the chisel and. And there'll be a little bit of sanding just to get the get it refined, but it, it all turned out pretty well. I was kind of worried about that step of the process, uh, so I'm glad to have that kind of that center part behind and ready to go. So now it's just on to working uh, the ends and the end caps. All right, so I've got the dados measured up for both of the end caps.
caps. Unfortunately, they're not quite in the same place. They're really close, but not quite. I am going to use the uh, router table to cut those dados, so I'll take multiple passes, just kind of raising the bit gradually. I'm going to have to do one at a time. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use one setup for both ends, so they're off just a hair. Um, so I'll do each of them individually, so let's get to it. Hey, this is just a quick check-in. I've got the ends, both of the end caps, uh, the dado cut, and it, it fits. It goes on in place. You can see the one here on the right-hand side of the bench is in place, and you can kind of see how that notch is working um, there on the end. Now I'm getting ready to work on the pieces that go in the middle. So I zoomed in to the pieces that go on that end in between the leg and the end cap. And you can see here I've got dovetails marked out. That'll kind of hide the slot to some degree out there on the outer edge and also provide some stability near the bottom of that apron as well. So especially on the right hand side, that will be part of, that's going to be the vice chop, if you will, that's attached to the bench. So it is going to take some wear and tear so I, I, that, I wanted to make sure the bottom portion that kind of hangs below the core of the top has a little bit of support so uh, I'm going to break out the jigsaw if you've got a bandsaw it'd probably be much easier but anyway I don't have a bandsaw so we'll go to the jigsaw and, and start cutting out the pins for the dovetails Back with a quick check-in. I've got the pins cut for the portion of the apron for, for the front and back that'll go in between the leg and the end. And then on the ends I've got those uh, kind of cored out where those dovetails are going to go. I took that down to the drill press and just kind of cored in and removed most of the waste so I just got to go back and clean that up with a chisel. And then the piece you see in the middle that's got the three holes in it, uh, the center hole will get tapped and that's what will essentially be the nut for the end vise. And then the other two holes are just for uh, dowel rods that'll help uh, reduce racking um, in operating the vise. So that's what that is. And uh, so now it's just kind of cleaning up and getting those dovetails fit, fitted and then we'll glue it all together. Here's just a quick check-in. I've got the end caps glued on to the bench. So really at this point, the bench itself is, is fully assembled, glued up, and now it's just down to refining some of the edges. I need to flatten the top. We'll also start gluing up uh, panels for vice chops. So those are the next step in the process. You can kind of see here, I ended up using uh, ratchet straps so that I could kind of clamp the whole thing uh, both width and lengthways. Um, so getting ready to pull it apart and start addressing the top. My next step is to, is to start addressing the top and getting it flat and smooth. So. Prior to doing this, uh, prior prior to shooting this, I, I did put winding sticks on both ends and kind of siding down there or down the length of the bench, looking to see if it's twisted at all. Meaning, you know, if I've got a corner or or some place that's really high compared to the rest of the bench. Luckily, it's in really pretty good shape. I'm really somewhat surprised uh, given all the different steps. Also, just kind of laterally this way checking kind of down the bench across um, with a level it's in pretty good shape overall it's a little hard to tell just level end to end um, the concrete floor here in the basement isn't exactly level this area is not too bad and as i'm checking the level kind of lengthways also tight within the bubble so 
overall, I'm pleased with the way it's come out. Um, so the next thing to do is just to kind of get all of the glue off, uh, just get everything smoothed out with all the different laminations. It's obviously uneven. So we'll start out with a number four smoothing plane, just kind of knocking down the high spots, and then we'll kind of work up to the number five jack plane. And then finally, we'll go up to the, I think this is a number seven uh, jointing plane. So that'll get it get a nice flat surface all the way down the bench. So the hard work, hard work is getting ready to start next. So here's a quick update shot with the bench top flat. I've kind of done with the planes. Everything leveled out pretty well. There's a, a spot in the center that's just a little bit lower than the outside edges. But overall, it's I mean, it's probably a sixteenth of an inch or so. It's, it's not too bad. The, the best part, honestly, was the bench is rock solid. It did not budge literally planing on the top of the bench and so I'm really really pleased with that I'm really looking forward to uh, how sturdy this is going to be uh, with workbench construction complete I thought it'd be a good point to end part one of the video so in part two we'll pick up and start building the vices including all the shop made mechanics and then kind of summarize the entire project so please check out part two for all those other details.